Hello! Well, <laughs> welcome to uh, what's probably going to be a pretty epic video. Now, you might be like, why is that going to be epic? I'll show you why, because this is why. Oh my god, it's like Edward Nakaya kimono hands or something. Um, if this is not a hint at what is to come, then I will tell you it's a kind of like a Nakaya overview, not of every color, not of every model, but just of the ones that I have access to right at this moment. So, hello, welcome. I am your host, Gourmet Pens. <laughs> and um, let's look at these pens. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the pen, I'm gonna tell you what the nib is, and then we are going to take an intimate look at the pens on the desk. Okay, the first pen I have is a dorsal fin 2 in Ishime Kanshitsu Silver. These are hard to get, they cost a fortune, and they take a long time to make, and it is a wild pen. Like, Nakai's are usually fairly light, this one is not, and it is equipped with a double broad cursive italic from nibs.com in rhodium trip, I think? Anyway, whatever. Rhodium? Yes, it looks like rhodium to me. I'm trying, to, yeah. I'm trying to decide if it's rhodium or ruthenium, but I'm pretty sure it's rhodium. Anyway, this pen is wild. I like, don't, okay, I'm gonna try and match up the, oh, I got it. It's like a boat canoe of glory. So, sword. fantastic, it's a sword. Duh, gourmet pens. Okay, moving on to the next one. This is a Nakaya Decapod Rider in Kuro Tamenuri. Now, the Decapod has the 10 facets, the Rider has the clip, and um, this particular pen is equipped with a soft, fine nib in gold. All of these nibs are 14 karat, just so you know. And let's cap that one and move on to the next one, which is actually like the big brother of the Decapod. This is the Decapod Twist, also in Kuru Tamanuri, and it is also a writer with a clip. What's really interesting is this one is very unused, whereas this one is lovingly used, and so the lacquer has changed over time, so it'll be really fun to show that to you in detail. This one, like, oh my god, they feel so good. It's like so soft, like they're firm, but it's like, like soft in hand. I don't know. Also a soft fine nib and also gold. This one is like pristine and it's wild. I love it. The next pen is, it's mine. It's the only one in the entire line up here that actually belongs to me. Um, this is the portable cigar in the Milky Way galaxy finish. And on it is a rhodium soft, wait, elastic medium nib. So they start out with a soft medium and then they put the cutouts in to make it elastic. That's what you got here. And I'm gonna try and line that pattern up. You can't see the pattern right now. I didn't line it up, by the way. You can't see the pattern, but it's really pretty in detail. Next up, we have like one of the most epic pens ever, along with the, the dorsal fin too. And anyway, um, this is the long in the Ascending Blue Dragon. Now, this is a wild pen. Like, you just glance at it, you're like, oh, it's a green pen. But when you look at it, there's a dragon glowing on here. So, it's madness. The nib is a ruthenium double broad. Now, you guys know I'm a klepto. If there's any pen I want to steal, it's probably this one. Because, like, honestly, a double broad nib, it's got this, like, wild dragon that's, like, swirling its way up the pen. <laughs> okay. Ahem. <clears throat> Next up, we have a portable writer in the discontinued AO Tamanuri. So it's a dark pen. The glowing bits are like the, the indigo coming through. It's really nice. This one has a two-tone medium nib, which is like just a medium, but it's so gorgeous that you're like, this is unreal. And it is. So there we go. We got that one. Next up, we have a very, like, it's simple, but it's so classy that you just can't not love it. So this is a portable writer in just black, like just straight up black. In pictures on the websites, it does not look this good. And when you see it in person, it's like a black hole. And you are like, wow, that is gorgeous. And it is, it's just radiant in such a deep, creepy way. <laughs> so 
The nib on here is a horrendous ultra extra fine, so we're gonna recap that and never speak of it again. <laughs> okay, the next one is very interesting. This is the 17 millimeter portable cigar in shoe unpolished. So what does that mean? The 17 millimeter compared to another portable cigar, this one's thicker. So it's just a girthier pen. So if you find the uh, regular cigar is just like too slim, you're like, mm, it's not doing it for me. Take a look at the 17 millimeter because this is like a whopper in hand. <laughs> it's like, honestly, like you feel that. Uh, that is a soft, fine elastic nib. So it's got the shoulder cutouts, just like the elastic medium I showed you. And that is all. Now the shoe unpolished, unlike all of the other ones, um, this one is unpolished, so it's not glossy. It's not radiant like the lac like the finished ones, like the lacquered over top. There is a polished version, but like to be honest, I find this really fascinating. And if you look at it closely, you can like see that there's so much, there's so many layers to it. It's wild as well. So just like in its own way, it's wild. So um, if you're like, in case you're curious, the because it is so girthy, it's the same like girth and width of a Mont Blanc 149, which is a pretty substantial pen. So if you like that kind of thing, like if you like a giant pen, giant, a larger section, and you are hesitant about Nakai's because they tend to be on the small, like slimmer side, if you're an oversized pen person, they're on the slimmer side, then maybe consider this one. I find it strangely comfortable. I don't want to like it too much because it's just going to be added to the list of things I want to steal. So there we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Nakayas, only one of which belonged to me. And thank you kindly to my uh, very trusting friend for allowing me to touch these pens and for like sort of trusting me to not run away with them. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say toodaloo, ta-ta. And then we're going to go down, look at the stuff in detail. You're going to see the wild colors. We're going to maybe ink, possibly just dip. I don't know how he feels about me inking all of these pens. Either way, it's going to be really fun. And I hope this is super fun and exciting for you because it is very exciting for me. It's very dangerous because now all of these are on my wish list. So we will see you in a second. Bye-bye. Oh, she's got a handful of uh, Nakaya kimonos. So, uh, hello, welcome to this part of the video, which is, in this case, definitely the more exciting part. So let's take a look at these. Holy smokes. Okay, I, like, I'm looking at this and I'm like drooling to myself. Now, I'm not going to do writing samples. I can't remember if I said I was going to do writing samples, but I decided it doesn't really make sense because some of them have the same nib and like I don't have a range of the nibs. I've already done um, a Nakaya nib overview. So let's just look at how like ridiculously stunning these all are. So first up, I'm going to just like slide this up so we can look here. This is the Dorsal Fin 2 in Ishimi Kanshitsu Silver. So it's supposed to be like a Japanese sword, like whooshing, you know, I saw a canoe because I'm an idiot. But <laughs> if you're, you know, like minded in the right way, you will see the sword. Now that I know what it is, I can see it. And I'm kind of embarrassed like that I didn't see it to begin with. But um, it's, it's wild. It's solid. It's not a heavy pen, but you can feel it. And the silver powder, like you don't really notice it. It has a texture to it. Very smooth, but it is like ridged in a way. And it's the base appears to be black and it looks like they took silver powder and like packed it on and created this wild shape. And um, it's just a crazy pen. So let's unsheath it. Matching section, thank goodness. And the nib is a double bra that has been modified to a cursive italic. It is ruthenium plated to match the... Now, the th interesting thing is, like, unlike the rest of the Nakai's, which are lacquered, this one feels metallic. So, like, if you like metally feeling pens and you have, like, a couple thousand dollars to spare, I would order one of these. And, you know, a couple months to wait, if not, like, two years. But uh, yeah, that's fun. So there's the nib. It is wicked. Um, sorry, I'm trying to, you know, multitasking and all. 
Wicked Nib. It's a Curse of Italic. I personally, I love John Monashaw's work, so I'm a big fan of it. I have dipped it in the past. Oh, I didn't line that up properly. Ah, there we go. So that is the Dorsal Fin 2 in Ishimi Kanshutsu Silver. Absolutely stunning. Wicked. Now, you will notice that some of these have clips, some of them don't, some of them are rolling away on me. One of the great things about this particular model is it don't roll. It just stays. And I don't like clips on my pens, but I also don't like when they roll away on me. So this is actually pretty awesome. I like that it just stays there. I mean, like it's, it's an unusual look, but like it's very practical. So I can live with that. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that it would cost me like two kidneys and a liver, I'd probably get one. So, there we go. Next up, we have uh, the Decapod Writer. And this is the Kudo Tamanuri finish. In the Writer, it's got a clip. And this is a 10-sided Decapod. Duh. 10-sided, it is, um, this is a fairly used one. So, it's the red is radiating more, un unlike this one, which is the Decapod Twist but this is a, a new one, so it hasn't been used as much. You can see, aside from the actual twisting shape, you can see that this one has a lot more black going on, whereas the twist has much more red glowing through the edges. This one has, actually, might as well do them both at the same time because they're like partners in crime. They both have 14 karat gold, soft, fine nibs, um, take a look at the section. I, I don't know if it'll pick it up, but this one has more red coming through. This one's darker. Uh, it's it's not just on the edges so much, but it's more so like in the center here. Absolutely fascinating. But when you look here, you can see it's very obvious that this one is changing over time. This one is like brand spanking new. I think the only solution is that you get two and you keep one in your hoard and don't ever use it and then see how they look after time because it's like that's that's just an excuse don't listen to me so that is the decapod and decapod twist really very interesting models i don't know which one i like more like i like the twist but i like the decapod so there's both there you go next up let's this is actually mine just for the record all of these do not belong to me. The only one that belongs to me is this one. This is the uh, Portable Cigar in the Milky Way Rodden Finish. I purchased this in um, Belgium at Sakura Fountain Pen Gallery. <sighs> Never go to a brick and mortar store. You will see things and you won't be able to leave without them. And that is exactly what happened. I have a thing for Rodden. I like shiny things. I'm basically staring at the camera just looking at the glitter. This is a black base with hand-applied bits of rotten. It is, um, it is wearing a medium elastic nib. So they created this by using a soft medium nib and putting cutouts into the shoulders. To be honest, I regret not getting a double broad or a music nib on it just because I, I, I prefer like the wider writing experience. So, I don't know, I haven't decided what if I want to sell it or if I want to like keep it or just get a new pen and keep the nib. Anyway, doesn't matter. I am completely in love with the finish though because it's glittery. So, oh my god, look at that. Let's Oh yeah. The only problem with this thing is it rolls like a mofo and it's really annoying because the last thing you want rolling off your desk is this. <laughs> Speaking of things rolling off your desk, um, this one's not going to roll. This is a Nakaya Portable Rider in just black. Just like straight up black. So the Milky Way has the same black base, which is partly what attracted me to it, aside from all the glittery shiny bits that you basically, yeah, like basically if you do this, it's just black. This one is really strange. Like you might think that a black Nakaya is really boring, I'll tell you what, it's not, it's not boring. Cause when you see it, it just like radiates this crazy glow. This has a two tone medium nib on it. It's an exquisite daily writer. It is actually inked, but I'm not gonna show you anything because I haven't done the other ones, but it's super classic. It feels so good. This pen is just like, 
divine. It just, I'm going to stop, but really nice. Super classy, super elegant. The black is just, I don't know, just draws your eye. So there's the black. Uh, speaking of eyeball drawing, we have the, uh, this is the long in the blue dragon finish. Now, to my eyeballs, this looks super green. To your eyeballs on your screen, I'm guessing it's going to look blue, green, and less green, more blue. Um, it is, it's got like a base color of like a deep, depending on the color that you're seeing, either a deep blue or a deep green. And then the dragon is like wildly glowing over top. Seriously, people, look at that. Oh, this pen is just like so, uh, I, you know, there's no appropriate words for it. It's beautiful. The artwork is unreal. The craftsmanship is fantastic. But the effect that they have captured with lacquer is just, it's glorious. And the section is no joke. It's just crazy. To be honest, like you might be totally captivated by the pen. Let's make it even better. It has a double broad ruthenium nib. So you can imagine that this is basically a pen I'm going to have to steal at some point or try to steal if I don't get killed before I actually get away with it. Wickedly gorgeous. It is a large pen. Um, let me just compare it quickly to the portable. It is much larger. It is longer. Um, it feels damn good. So let's move on. This is the oh, um, uh, <laughs> the 17 millimeter. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's a lot of Nakayos. There's a lot of complicated names going on here. This is the 17 millimeter portable cigar in the shoe unpolished finish. What the heck does that mean, Aziza? It means it is a shoe unpolished. So it's sort of a vermilion, but it doesn't have that glossy finish to it. And it's much thicker. So this is just the regular portable writer. And this is the 17 millimeter, which, as I mentioned earlier, has the section of a 149. It is a whopper. So it's definitely bigger, definitely more substantial, not significantly heavier, but... There you go. And the nib is a soft, ela no wait, sorry, an elastic fine, which is a soft fine that has the cutouts in it. I think the gold actually looks really good on this pen. Um, it's a fairly unused, unpolished, and from what I understand, this will also change over time. I'm guessing it'll get glossier with oils and like abuse. Um, I don't know, we'll have to see. It's a very interesting model. I think the color is fascinating. I don't know if I would personally pick the 17 millimeter because it feels a bit girthy in my grip, but um, it ain't my pen, so that's all good. And that's just one less pen I have to steal. This one, last but not least, yes, they're all gone. Um, this is the portable writer in the discontinued AO Taminuti. Now, from what I can see, like just looking at this pen, it's like a really, really dark, dark brown. You're probably seeing black, and this is like kind of a green coming through. So they discontinued this finish because they were having trouble achieving consistency across the finishes, like making sure the colors were matching. It's really gorgeous, though. This is like, to me, this is green, like a sea green. It's, it's really nice. And this is a soft fine. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, no, this has an ultra extra fine on it. Yeah, 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 that's disgusting. Um, we're not even gonna talk about that. This is basically like the raisin of the pen world. Uh, ultra extra fine, moving on. Really gorgeous pen though. The AO Taminuti is, it's really quite exquisite and it's really hard to capture on camera. And it don't matter because you can't buy them from Nakaya anyway anymore because they're not making them. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. We all just get to suffer and enjoy it from afar. So, <laughs> there we go. There is, how many Nakayas is this? Like, can somebody count? I can't. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Nakayas. Um, laughable to consider the value that is sitting on this notebook. Please don't come kill me. None of these belong. Okay, one of these belong to me. The rest, thank you very much to a very kind friend for letting me touch your pens, ink some of them, 
and fantasize inappropriately about them. It's been lovely. I hope you enjoyed this Nakaya like model overview of just finishes that are pretty to look at and nibs that are fun to fantasize about. If you liked, please like, please subscribe, and you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Patreon as Gourmet Pens and other social medias as Toronto Pen Company. Okie dokie. Take care. We will see you next time.